Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm Lisa Curcio. Today is Monday, it is July 10th, the year is 2023, and this is a special YouTube premiere, which means I'm here with you in the live chat. Make sure you log into your Gmail account so you can chat with us live. I'm here to answer your questions. And of course, you can leave comments if you were here watching the replay. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make three different birthday pocket cards using designer series paper. I've got a couple variations for you because we can include a gift card holder in one of them. Now you're gonna to wanna to download the project sheet when tonight's premiere is over. You're gonna find the cutting dimensions and the project information linked down in the video description for you below. That will lead you over to my website and there you can download that project sheet that includes multiple pictures of each of the projects I'm gonna share with you tonight, the cutting dimensions and the supplies. And before we get started, I wanna make sure you know all about that beautiful name in blue off to the side, Grace Hudson. She's here moderating with me tonight for the premiere, and we're here to provide links and answer your questions. So please do chat with us. All right, we're ready, let's get started. Gonna move those buttons up and out of the way. And I am actually going to teach you how to do this fold using scrap white paper, because you can't see on designer series paper too well. I'm going to bring in the paper trimmer, and this is eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Now, if you're gonna use designer series paper, which is what I encourage you to do, because that's what this pocket card is all about, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you cut it eight and a half by 11. Now, you can do this first step by folding. I just find I'm more accurate and get a better crease if I score. But we're in essence gonna make four quadrants. So we're gonna go in half this way, and we're gonna go in half this way. So I'm gonna start up here using my paper trimmer. Now my trimmer both includes the scoring and the cutting blade, and I love them. They stay on the track at the same time, and we're gonna use them tonight. Now that clear cutting guide is gonna be really beneficial tonight because it's gonna allow me to provide you with some pencil marks as well. So I'm gonna use my pencil as well as the blade tonight so that I can kind of show you where we need to go. I better make sure I'm lined up right. So half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. And then I'm gonna use that pencil mark. So we're gonna score right down in there. Those pencil marks are just making it easier for you to follow along with me. Now we're gonna turn it this way and we're gonna go five and a half, which is half of 11. Let's score and then we'll do that pencil mark for you once again, All right? So those are those four quadrants we talked about. Very simple now, what we're going to do is we're gonna take this bottom right quadrant and we're gonna fold up the tip of this corner so that this edge is even with this pencil line or the crease. So you're gonna see I'm coming inside of here. You wanna make sure that you don't overlap it. If you're not sure, come up like this and make sure that you can crease it. And then once you're good, go ahead and you're gonna crease up on this area. I'm gonna use my bone folder. Now we're gonna also crease up here. Now you can eye this, of course, you're just gonna to wanna to come over about three inches. But for those of you that are like precise measurements, let's go ahead and line this edge up with the three inch mark, because I also use this to kind of measure with. I'm gonna make a little tiny tick mark there, and I'm gonna move this out of the way. And now we're going to crease this end in. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that this edge here is as straight as possible. And of course with designer series paper, that means you may have some advantages if yours has a pattern or lines in it. So I'm just looking to do the best that I can. And I'll come over that with my bone folder as well. So, so far, this is what we have. Now I am calling this the A quadrant. Whoops. I'm calling that the A quadrant. I'm calling this B. I'm calling this C and this D. I know that sounds kind of weird because it's out of order. It's gonna make sense. Now we're gonna have to create a slit. So this is gonna make a card as well as the pockets. Now you're gonna cut from here to here. Now you can use your scissors, but I love my trimmer because I get a much straighter line. So I'm gonna line this up once again. Now that black track is where the blade is going to travel. Or again, we can just line it back up at that five and a half inch mark. And we are gonna cut to here. Now there's a little indicator on my cutting blade that tells me where to stop. And it's impossible to see it on the video, but it's there. Now let me move that off to the side. And you're gonna be able to see now that this is what we've got. Now it's just a matter of folding it. Now I'm gonna swap this out for the designer series paper because I think that the folding portion is much easier for you to see with the pattern. Now let me bring in the designer series paper. Now you're gonna see that I did do a little bit of creasing, but let me show you how it goes. B goes over here to D, okay? So there's our first pocket. And this is gonna come up. It's gonna go like this. And then this piece goes to the back. 
Now there's a couple variations like I told you. This can get sealed, which means you just use the two pockets. Isn't that fun? But I'm going to teach you another variation tonight, and I have several samples to share with you, one of which is sealed so that you can get some alternate ideas. Let's go ahead and let's talk about how we're going to seal these pockets first so this is not going to fall apart. I'm going to bring in the silicone craft sheet here, and you're going to do this while everything is nice and flat. That's the easiest way. So obviously, if you see this, we're going to have to seal this. I don't necessarily seal here unless I was concerned that it would fall out, but it's really not going to. So I'm going to open this and using my silicone craft sheet, I'm going to use a little bit of adhesive here. Now here's why I like the silicone craft sheet. I don't want the entire width of my adhesive just because I know the size of my pocket. So I'm able to put half of it here and then just kind of work back on those tabs. And then we're going to turn this around and again, this is going to get sealed. Now remember, this is the B going to the D that I just shared with you. Let me bring that in so that makes a little bit of sense. The B to the D, all right? That's going to seal that outside edge and we're just going to press up here. Now this is going to come up once again. So this is the A and the C are going to come up. So we've got to seal this little area here. Now for this, I'm just going to make little dashes because it's such a small area. You can even use a glue dot, of course, liquid glue. Just be careful that you're not too generous with your glue and then we're gonna press that closed. This now is going to come to the back. Do your very best to line up your edges and then I want you to go over it with your bone folder to make sure that everything is nice and flat and it looks purposeful. Let's now talk about how this gets designed and how this actually turns into the double pockets and how they work. I'm gonna grab some basic white cardstock here. I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping, use my Memento black ink pad. Let's go ahead and open that up. I chose images from the Darling Details stamp set. Cute, huh? Very whimsical. You're going to find that if you like to color, you've got outline images here. But if you don't, it's a two-step stamp, which means these solid images will fill the outline images. No fuss, quick and easy. I love that it also includes greetings and it's offered as a bundle. So you're going to be able to get the coordinating dies, but check out how abundant these are. So you've also got some frames here, which I really, really like. And I've used this once before in my videos. So here we're going to do some stamping. I've pulled out that large flower. Photopolymer means the stamp is clear and it's going to turn the color of the ink, which means it's going to be easy to navigate. So I'm going to stamp one of those here. I'm cleaning that off camera on my stamp and scrub. And then I've got that small little flower here and I'm going to do one, two, three, and four. Now remember there's dies, so you're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of space between them so you can die cut them really, really well. And let's go ahead and let's cap this. I always like to let the ink process before I go coloring, especially when I'm using my alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers. And that's what I'm gonna be doing tonight. I'm gonna to bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see this next step. Now I'm gonna be using the color that coordinates with my designer series paper. And this is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. This is Fresh Freesia and of course that's black. So I've got the Fresh Freesia Stampin' Blends markers here. Now there's a light and the dark of each of the colors that they offer. They come in a combo pack, love that. You have both the chiseled end and the thicker end and they are indicated here by those lines. I like the thicker end when I'm going to cover a broader period and I'm just going to do just one area of this flower just to kind of give you an idea. I'm going to go small circular motions. I like to save and preserve that chisel tip the best that I can so I'm actually using the side of the marker. I often reposition the marker as well when I'm coloring. Now you're going to see I wasn't real particular about covering the whole thing. I did color one of these as well and just for fun I'm going to go ahead and give you a couple little tips here on the petals, just so that you'll understand how to color it. That alcohol ink needs a few seconds to process or evaporate before you lay down the darker shade. That's gonna allow the colors to blend when we're done. If you get too excited, you're gonna have a little bit of a spreading mess, so take your time. I love to do all my lights first, and then I wait and I come back with my darks. Now I get asked this quite a bit. Can I do the dark first? The answer is absolutely, of course. I'm going to come up here and for me, I'm just going to simply trace the outside of this area. Now you may want to go into the whole shading process and get really fancy if you are very experienced with alcohol-based markers. I'm keeping this nice and simple because this is a very whimsical flower. Up here, 
I chose to pick one side and I made the lines all on the same side all the way around the petals. And again, if you want to add a couple little dots of darker shade in the middle, you can. The processing process is the same for the dark as it is the light. You're going to want to take your time. Then you can come back over here and I'm going to do again small circular motions. But do you see what I'm doing? I'm making sure that I'm blending that dark into the light marker. This is going to help remove the differentiation between the dark and the light and make it look a little bit more blended. Now, if you're like me and you love the color, you can just take your time. But if you're not, you can just kind of go a little bit all over. And what's going to happen as this processes is something really interesting. You're going to end up with light and dark areas naturally because you didn't repeat an area once this processes. And like I said, I have them all done for you and I did die cut those ahead of time. So there's my colored one. Let me pull out my other smaller ones here for you. And then of course we've got another solid and we've got one colored. I also took the liberty using those exact same dies of die cutting some additional pieces. So I brought in two of these like sprig vine pieces and then I also die cut some leaves. Now we're going to put this together on the front of the card and I know it looks like a lot of pieces but I've got a trick for you that I shared in a previous video. I also have a YouTube short on it so that if you need to kind of repeat this you can do so. so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to lay this flat. Now if you find that things are kind of moving on you a little bit and that's frustrating, take one of your clear blocks and help hold everything down to make your life a lot easier. When I cut this 12 by 12 designer paper into eight and a half by 11, I ended up with a strip of one inch on one side that was left over. And I'm gonna build on top of here. This is gonna go here across the bottom because this is gonna be quote unquote my bridge, I guess, where we're gonna build. So I'm gonna add some adhesive here to the back side. I always use that silicone craft sheet because I tend to get a little messy with my adhesive. I'm going to leave a little bit of that paper showing at the bottom and I'm doing my best to align the sides and we're going to tack that down. All right, now we're going to lay it out. So the biggest tip I can give you when you have a lot of floral pieces or a lot of greenery is to get an idea of the mapping first. So I'm going to want this one here and I'm going to work on some of my white pieces as well. So I'm going to tuck one over here and I'll take another one here and there's no right or wrong way to this, which is what I love. It's just going to be a matter of preference. I'm going to add another one here. So these are going to kind of go up on an angle. Those black vine pieces, I kind of decided I wanted them tucked a little bit behind. So I've got one here and then I'm going to have another one kind of going like this to kind of fill some of that space. And you can make them higher or lower. Remember, this is one pocket area. Now you're probably thinking, well, you're going to lift all those up and everything is going to move. How are you going to make that work? Well, we're not done. we got more leaves. So I've got a little white leaf here. I mean, you'll recall I had a couple others tucked underneath here. Let's do one of those. And I wanted to make sure those were kind of falling near the black area because I wanted to make sure that they would be a little bit more visible. And then the last one I think I'm going to put here. Now here is the magic of this great tip. You may have heard me talk about this and I'm peeling it off my little desktop here. This is Glade Press and Seal. One side of this is really sticky. It sticks to itself. I reuse this over and over and over again. The great thing about it, it's going to hold all the pieces together, but it's also a bit staticky. So you're going to want to make sure that you work quickly. So I'm going to put this right down on top like this, and you're going to see it's going to stick here. So I'm going to press this all in place, and you can see my pieces are right where I had put them. And then I'm carefully going to lift this, and I'm going to peel the designer series paper card off the back. Now you want to be careful because obviously some of those smaller pieces are going to want to stick. But here's the beauty of this. We can now attach our dimensionals to those areas to anchor them down. I'm going to move you in once again. I'm going to bring in my dimensionals here and I'm using my take your pick tool to help me with those. And what we're going to do is we're going to anchor those areas together. So I'm using these also for two reasons, not only to elevate my image, but to anchor my placement. So kind of a two for one. I wanna make sure those dimensionals are not gonna show outside the perimeter of my image, of course. And I do wanna make sure that this is well balanced because I know my card is probably gonna go through the mail. So I wanna make sure my dimensionals are well distributed. Sometimes here at the top, these dimensionals, because of their size, might not fit really, really well. And if that's the case, like this one fits pretty good, I'm going to bring in my mini dimensionals. So I've got those there. Again, I love these because they are pre-cut. So I'm again 
anchoring those pieces together so that they won't move, creating balance to my card. I'm going to put one more there and I think we're good. So my leaves are all tacked down now and my branches are in place. I am going to give that a good press to make sure those dimensionals are all there. It's good and stuck. And then what we're going to do is we are going to carefully peel back the press and seal. Like I said, same piece I've used multiple times. I want to say I've used it six or seven times. You can attach it right to the back of one of your stamp cases or just leave it in a drawer. Now that I've got this anchored, I'm going to come in with the back side of my Take Your Pick tool, which includes my paper piercing tool attachment. Bracing the paper, I'm releasing the other side of the dimensional, which has the paper backing. This is going to make sure that nothing slips and moves on me. It also helps me wrangle those little tiny paper backings. I do have basal joint arthritis in between my thumb and the bottom of my hand. So peeling is difficult for me. So that tool helps me tons. So again, here we go. We've got our pieces together. And then we're just going to decide once again where we want to put that. Being cognizant of our pocket and we're going to tack it together. Now there's one spot here, do you see it, where they're not perfectly attached and this is where we're going to do card surgery. These are my glue dots. I'm going to pick up one of those here. doesn't even matter if it's slightly distorted. I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to stick that underneath and I'm going to tack that in place. So now everything is exactly where it's going to be. If you are concerned about this coming in and out of the envelope, I want to give you another tip. Back to the silicone craft sheet. Remember I told you liquid glue will not stick to it. Now this precision tip glue applicator has been a YouTube fan favorite. I'm going to talk to you about that. I use the multi-purpose liquid glue sold in my online store. That's where you can find all these products. But what I did is I found this product and I squeezed it inside that needle applicator because this tip was too big. I have this linked for you on my website under shop craft room favorites because so many of you fell in love with it. You're like, where did you get it? So I've linked it there for you. I'm going to use that rubber band to hold that little cap down in place so that it's not flopping on me if it wants to cooperate. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is shake that glue down. The glue is nice and thick. The great thing is it dries really quickly and I am just going to get those little dots started. Look how tiny we can get those. Isn't that fantastic? So now what I'm going to do is very gingerly lift this and I'm going to find a solid spot between those flowers and I'm going to add a little tiny dab. Look how small those can be. And I'm going to press. I'm going to do the exact same thing here. You know, you don't want your card to fall apart when they receive it. There's nothing absolutely worse than that. And then we're going to press. If in fact you're kind of busy with your hands, let that clear block work to your advantage. Now let's talk about this. Nobody likes a gunky tip. So clean that off between your silicone craft sheet and then use that silicone cap that's included and to cap that. That's going to keep it from drying up. Make sure you store it straight up and down. All right, now that this looks pretty good, let's talk about those inserts, most of which I have finished for you. And you're going to recall, we still got this left over, don't we? I took the liberty of doing these two pieces ahead of time, and they're going to get layered. But I wanted to put that flower there because it's going to go in one of my pockets. And again, all these measurements for all the variations I'm going to share with you tonight are included in that project sheet. So I want to put this here somewhere near the top. Now, no two cards are alike. My first one, the greeting is a little bit further to the left, so I had room up here. Let's see if we can get creative, right? I've got my stamp and write basic black marker. Again, dual ended. This is a dye based marker, not like the alcohol based marker. Big difference. So I'm going to use that chisel tip and I can see I need to work somewhere around here. So I'm going to come up down here and I'm going to make a line for a stem. Nice and whimsical. But this stamp set includes some really cute leaves I wanted to use. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink those up. I'm going to stamp one here. Watch my head if it's in the way. I'm so sorry. I'm trying not to get into your camera view. And then we're going to clean that off and we'll cap that. And now we can add that die cut flower. If you wanted, you certainly could have stamped it and colored it on there. But I knew my navigation might be a little bit off the cardstock. So that's where the die comes into play. Now, if you're really creative with the adhesive, you can get inside those little areas. Otherwise, I'm simply dragging the tip of the needle glue bottle because I want to make sure that I don't have it so thick that it's going to ooze outside the edges. Using that take your pick tool again, I'm going to put that here because if my glue is oozing, guess what? It's going to end up here and not on my work surface, which I love. 
Let's go ahead and give that a good push. I'm going to look, and yeah, there's a little bit of glue, but I think we're going to be okay. Let's add our adhesive here to the back side. Again, this comes out in tabs, so if you get a little zealous like I do, you can tuck them back in so there's no waste. I'm turning this horizontally, which is going to make it so much easier for my hand to try to get this even. So I'm looking to leave that nice border all the way around, and then once I'm happy with it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to let it go. This is going to go right inside the front pocket. Okay, now let's talk about the second pocket. I already did it for you. I used the greeting from the stamp set inside of here. Now, of course, the Darling Details includes greetings like I shared with you. You saw those here. But I decided I wanted a little bit bigger greeting, so I switched over to this one. Very best occasions. You invest in your stamp sets. Borrow from Peter to work on Paul. And I love this one because it has a variety of greetings, including the holidays here. You'll find this in the annual catalog. So I put those layers together. Again, those cutting dimensions are inside your project sheet. And that is gonna go down inside of here. And I love this because the fact that they layered, you can see the colors, but guess what? There's still a hole inside of this card. Now, I didn't adhere this because you're thinking, well, now what? No problem, we can just take the pocket out. Let's remove these really quick because I wanna give you a variation. Let's say we wanted this all sealed. Obviously, you're going to add adhesive here, and this is going to become one piece, and you can use the pockets independently. I've got one to share with you. But in this case, I'm actually going to add a gift card to it. So there's still plenty of room here. You can go ahead and take a tiny bead of glue. Let's go ahead and use that, or you could use adhesive, whatever you're comfortable with. Again, you know how I am. I want to make sure I have no surprises, and I'm dragging that needle tip right near the edge because I don't want it to be too thick, and we're going to seal. Sometimes with this fold, I don't decide till the end if I want to seal this shut or if I want this to be open. It just depends on what I'm using it for and who I'm giving it to. So in this case, we're all sealed up. Again, let's change this up. So we've already talked about how this can go in here, right? And how this one can go up here. But what if we did this? What if we took this and removed this and we moved this to the inside, watch. We're going to add some adhesive to the back side. Now this piece is the same size as the other pieces in the cards I'm going to share with you. So don't worry about missing out on the directions. I've got you covered. I've got this measured so that inside or the reverse side of the designer series paper is peeking through. Isn't that fun? So now you have a whole full card base. But that front pocket can be used for lots of things, including a gift card. So it can slide right down in front. The presentation is adorable. You want to get super excited you can go ahead and you can add both right you can actually even attach this with a glue dot if you'd like and it can go inside the front pocket now let me share with you really quickly this other one this one no opening remember how we talked i actually sealed this shut so all this card right now is is a double pocket there's absolutely no inside to the card not wrong just different right so here's two slightly different variations, and I've got some other samples to share with you. Now this next one uses the Sending Smiles stamp set. It's been carried over from last year. It's in the annual catalog. The fun thing about this stamp set is it's buildable, which means you can use these greetings with these other phrases to make custom cards. But it also has these fabulous sending dies. So it die cuts the word sending, so you can die cut that if you'd like with the stamp or independently. And of course, build those phrases. And here is the card that I created. So this one actually is a full card once again. So it opens up on the inside. There's that double-sided designer series paper. And I did the two pockets. Now I'm going to show you something and I'm going to point it out. Look at the pattern. Do you see how the flowers are turned upside down? Then this area here. So be very cognizant of the direction of the designer paper that you choose. Frankly, I think it's kind of fun. But if it bothers you, make sure that you're aware of that. I tucked my gift card in the front pocket because, of course, I had the inside. But here, I put in a tag. And I absolutely love these dies because they do all the work for you. These are the tailor-made tags. You can see that you get four sizes in one shape and four in the other. It even die cuts the little grommets if you want them. So you don't have to fuss with it. And I just cut a panel. Of course, that size for you of the panels inside your project sheet as well. 
and that tucks right inside of here. Really a simple card and simple embellishments. I do want to point out that I did use the iridescent rhinestones on here because how can you go wrong with bling, right? I didn't put them on this one, but you certainly can add them. And then my last one, it's also, of course, a birthday card and a pocket, includes images from Zany Zoo. So this is sold as a bundle and you're going to want to buy them together because there's some really fun accessories that work with these images. This also has courting designer series paper and believe it or not, these silhouette dies will die cut some of the images from the designer series paper. So if you don't like to color, you've got quick and easy and cute cards. All right, let me show you this one. This one's really fun and whimsical and great for the kids or kids at heart. I used some white embossing powder and I did heat emboss that. I did color that with the Stampin' Blends marker. Got my Amazon gift card all ready to go. Did use another tag, another cute place to add just a small sentiment. But again, I decided to stamp, die cut, and attach. Look at that stool, isn't that cute? Something great to celebrate about you. But once again, I could have sealed this shut and used simply the two pockets like I did on this card that does not open. So lots of different variations for you. Now, I would love to know which one is your favorite. Would you do me a favor and pop down right now into the comments and let me know which one is your favorite. Your feedback is always very important to me. Now, while we're together, there's a couple things I want to make sure you know all about because if you like to shop, you're like me, you love bonuses. And right now, there's a great one. When you shop in July, you're going to earn for August. So you're going to get a coupon for $5 to use in August with any qualifying order during July. You'll find all that information over on my website at lisastampstudio.com. Click on shop. And while you're there, you'll find my generous rewards program as well. Next, let's talk about this. Stampin' Up! just debuted some brand new products. They're exclusively in the online store, which means they're not in a catalog. Head over there and check them out. You'll want to purchase when you see them, because we can't guarantee inventory on those, they're called the online exclusives. And then here at Lisa Stamp Studio, we're really big into the Stamp Studio memberships. You're all telling me how much you love them. These are cards that I designed. They're going to come straight to your inbox every Monday morning at 9 a.m. They're cards that I don't share on any of my other platforms. These cards are simple yet pretty. And every once in a while, I throw in a little bit of a flair there. Simple technique and maybe some upscale kind of layouts. These are for people who want to teach classes or clubs or who want to mass distribute the tutorial if they're teaching it maybe perhaps an assisted living facility or at a class where everybody needs a photo and the step-by-step -step instructions in addition to yourself. The photos in these are not watermarked, so you are more than welcome to share them. And of course, the only thing you can't do is sell them. It doesn't matter what country you live in, but if you love fun folds, you might want to consider level two. Level two includes a fun fold every month, a discount in my PDF tutorial library, and I do five random product giveaways. Head over to my website at lisastampstudio.com, scroll to the bottom, you'll see the word subscribe. And you're gonna to wanna to click that because I'll send you another free tutorial every Monday, I'm sorry, every Thursday. Got so many days, we send you so many things for free. And that's part of my newsletter subscription. I would absolutely love to have you and there's no cost involved. Mark your calendar, I'm coming back with you live. That's next Monday. Look at my calendar, it's July 17th already. I hope that you will plan to be here with me. Grace, thank you so much for all your help moderating tonight. And I look forward to having you all join me next Monday. Have a great evening, everyone.